Hello there, thanks for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard and today I'm going to show you three unused tickets from the Rolling Stones' fourth American tour in the fall of 1965. Now this first ticket here, this green one, is from Rochester, New York, and check out this quote from bass player Bill Wyman in his book. He said, quote, We woke up in a hotel in Rochester, New York um, on November 1st. He kept the diary, kept very tight notes to the news that Get Off of My Cloud was number one in both America and Britain. And with this, we had achieved five consecutive number one records, a feat previously accomplished only by the Beatles and Elvis Presley. So at least according to Wyman's diary, this is a heck of a special date in Stone's history for sure. Satisfaction had been number one that summer, and now Get Off of My Cloud was number one on the charts. So what a sweet ticket to have from War Memorial Coliseum in Rochester, New York. Now I will say the show itself unfortunately was kind of a disaster. Uh, it had to be stopped after only six songs. Hopefully they squeezed in satisfaction, but I don't know. Um, and Wyman actually says it was very bad badly handled by the police, so that's unfortunate. Okay, oh, and by the way, I should mention, it's kind of funny on this ticket, it says, under the Rolling Stones, it says, um, plus other acts, which, or and other acts, that's kind of, kind of vague, but, uh, you know, almost every concert had opening acts, it's just funny they would actually put it on the ticket. Okay, so for the next ticket from the Fall 65 tour, the magical name, Sid Bernstein Presents. Of course, very special as tied with the Beatles and the Stones in their first New York shows and stuff. This is from the Academy of Music in New York City on Saturday, November 6th, and it's for 1 p.m. matinee. Uh, that night, the Stones would play over in Philadelphia, so it was one of those two cities in one day type things that were common for the Stones back on these whirlwind tours. Interestingly, this has a $5.50 price tag. That was huge money for 1965. Most of the rest of rock didn't catch up with that until the end of the 60s. But then again, you did have an intimate venue. You had New York City, and this does say row E in the orchestra, which was probably in the first 10 rows. If there's no orchestra pit, that's row 5, or if there's some double letters, it's almost certainly in the first 10. So, um, you know, New York, everything's always a little more expensive, and, and uh, they like to think a little better, too. <laughs> So this one, the last one from 65, uh, Fall 65, is December 2nd in Seattle, Washington. And uh, interesting wording on there, it says, Pat O'Day and Dick Curtis present, getting a couple of local promoters. And this, uh, interestingly, I just talked about the 550 price tag. Well, this is $5, and it's in Seattle. But uh, maybe the promoters, as in Pat and Dick, overpriced uh, the show a little bit because reports have that the Coliseum was only about half full. But what's kind of fun for music fans and historians is that the opening acts were Northwest Legends The Whalers and Paul Revere and the Raiders up from Portland. So how cool would that be? They definitely became household names. And in matter of fact, Paul Revere and the Raiders' first national hit, Just Like Me, had just entered Billboard's singles chart this very week. So I love great timing like that. Oh boy, I love the Stones in 65, too. A lot of people think it was their peak year with a satisfaction cloud, you know, and the 19th Nervous Breakdown would be their next single, bought it as a kid and everything. Just great, great stuff. So thanks for dropping by, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.